So good afternoon, everybody. August Mila Fall to Gokdana. Good the old card special to show August with a castle of Caleb and Kade or high goblin and newest. So it is so wonderful to see you all in person. We're all very excited. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I see a lot of familiar faces, but for anyone I've yet to meet, I'm Miriam Kennedy, and I'm head of the Wild Atlantic Way in Fault, Ireland. Um, so like every part of the country, last year was such a difficult year um, on the West Coast for tourism businesses, but we worked so hard together to come through it, um, and I'm going to take you through some of the learnings and achievements from 2021. We're then going to move into recovery and growth, um, and I'm going to talk you through the new Wild Atlantic Way strategy 2022 to 26, and that sets out our ambition for the region uh, what we want to deliver, and how we're all going to work together to make sure it delivers for everybody. And then we're going to move into accelerating recovery for this year, and how we're going to do that through marketing and promotion. So, on to the roundup for 2021. And I'm not sure any number of slides can do justice to how much we all pulled together um, just to get as many people as we could through the door last year in the very short window we had. But I'm going to try. So we had 20 tourism networks up and down the West Coast, all meeting regularly, all working as hard as they could to promote and coordinate the destination. We had over 900 industry partners uh, come to our various workshops from Lean F&B to Marketing a Shoestring to Financial and HR Management. 158 businesses availed of our one-to-one -one mentors. And there was 1,160 workshop days in total on the Wild Atlantic Way last year. So lots of work being done. In addition to that, we had 116 businesses sign up to our Digital That Delivers program. And that's all about optimizing websites and introducing bookable systems. And we had 14 destination and experience development plans. There was 30 million euro paid out to West Coast businesses under our various business continuity schemes to over 3,000 businesses. And while all of that uh, was going on, we had 500 industry partners and stakeholders involved in destination recovery task forces and uh, destination experience development plans uh, from Malinhead to Kinsale. And I have to say, it was so heartening to see how invested everybody was, not just in a short-term response to the crisis, but how we were going to use the learnings to shape the future of tourism in each destination. And each network and destination shaped their own response. We had uh, the creation of events to digital brochures, to networking events, uh, to a pilot transition year program to alleviate the staffing crisis. And we're going to hear now from some of our industry, industry partners who championed these amazing initiatives. So here we go. The initiative is something that we all put together ourselves through the West Cork Tourism Network and uh, we decided that a digital brochure would suit for all our businesses to get together under one umbrella such and promote each other and, and promote West Cork. It's the visitor's one-stop guide to West Cork. So the visitor wasn't just stopping at the hot spots of West Cork, but they were stopping at all the way along. The great thing is, it's because it's a digital publication, it's just a, a, a website link. In our guest bedrooms, at our reception desk, we had the sticker with the QR code. So all we had to say to our guests was just scan your, uh, the QR code there in your phone and it would take them straight into the, the digital publication. There is a huge amount of more businesses that we can actually add to this and make this a bigger platform again. There's a huge amount of room to grow. It was clearly identified that we were going to have a problem during the summer in regard to staff and staff shortages. We were involved here at Harvey's with Donegal Tourism Task Force, a great collection of 56 hotels here in Donegal and we worked with LYIT and then of course Falls Ireland and then the Irish Hotels Federation. So we all came together, we clearly identified that we were going to be under serious pressure this summer for staff. The transitional year programme really made an enormous uh, difference to us. We had a bank of uh, staff to now come and join the team. We were all under pressure in regard to get people to come and join us, in particular for the summer, peak time, and we found that this programme then introduced new people to the industry. And that's so ex exciting in itself. This has given exposure to these, you know, next generation, these TY students, to what the sector is and actually opening their mind to the various different careers that are out there. The Winter Campaign was a strategic digital marketing campaign targeting key segments across the domestic market with strong messaging about what was available in Galway seven days a week 
throughout the winter season. It was to highlight what there was to do and the key activities around the city. Our future plans are to continue the good work that's happened to date, identifying key markets internationally that we can target as a collective. A rising tide lifts all boats, and that's our aim in Galway. So thanks to all of you for your hard work. That amount of collaboration and engagement, it not only got us through last year, it's given us a really strong platform we can build on in 2022 and beyond. And on the back of this, we've done a huge amount of research with you on the type of supports that you're going to need um, for this year and again beyond. And uh, here to talk to you about that a little bit further is Helen McDade, our manager for Enterprise Supports. Helen. Great, thanks a million, Miriam. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Just check where we are time-wise. As Miriam said, I'm Helen McDay with the Enterprise Supports Team. And I really just want to take the next few minutes to kind of give you a bit more detail about the supports plan for 2022. And I, I don't want to, to kind of bore you, but I just want to reiterate, but all you'll hear from all the speakers today, like there's just nothing like the energy that a group of tourism people can bring to a room. And I just think it's, it's really special to have everybody back together again. So now on to the more mundane business. Um, so really, like if you think about everything that the, the pandemic has thrown at you business-wise in the last couple of years, as, as we stand here now in February 2022, you have another brand new operational environment as you're kind of moving out of the end of the pandemic in, into what we hope will be a strong recovery. And as Miriam said, we've done an awful lot of research over the last couple of months, gotten a lot of feedback from yourselves, taken a lot of the insights gained. And really what we're looking at now for 2022 is we've chosen kind of six areas of priority supports. The first one of these is around finance and commerciality. And as, as Paul said this morning, this is obviously one of the key issues in terms of businesses survival. Financial stability is the bedrock of every business. And while a lot of businesses manage these really well, there are some businesses, particularly now as government supports will be, will be wound down, that they may be in a vulnerable position. So it's making sure we have the supports in place for that. We have a new Money Matters series, and the first one of those, I think, is kicking off back end of this month. I think it's on the 24th. And it's also around that, that commerciality and making sure businesses maintain that real commercial focus and ensuring that they're making the commercial, or, uh, commercial decisions that make sense for their business. Then in terms of demand creation and sales and marketing, as tourism markets open up in Ireland and internationally, like the competition is going to be intense as businesses try to re-establish their market share. Layer on to that on top, the consumer motivations have changed, what they're looking for changed. So it's more important than ever that you get your right message in front of the right people at the right time. Um, digital and channel distribution. This area has become so sophisticated and, and the speed of change here, it's like a warp speed. But we'll have a range of supports in place. Paul already mentioned some of them this morning in terms of digital it delivers. But we'll have a whole other range of supports to, to help your business at different levels. So no matter what level your business is at. Very importantly is around a revenue generation. So this will be where we'll work across a wide range of tourism businesses to really look at pricing strategies, as well as taking that much more holistic 360 revenue management approach to businesses to really kind of capitalize on additional revenue streams. HR and people management, I think, look, obviously, it, it, I don't need to tell anyone here, but as Paul outlined this morning, like we have a really strong schedule of supports here that's really um, structured around being able to get your people, being able to build the skills of your people, and being able to keep your people. And that'll be covered off this afternoon in detail in the session at 2 o'clock. And then last but not least is around climate action. Oh, if my buttons would work, it would help. Around climate action. Sustainability is obviously important for, for governments, it's important for tourism, it's important for consumers, and ultimately it's important for businesses because it's not just that it's a nice to do, but it can also make a lot of business sense to do it in terms of cost efficiencies and operational efficiencies, but also in terms of a USP to attract, um, to attract more visitors. So those, the other thing we wanted to do was really look at our delivery method for this year and recognize that we need to kind of do things differently to make these supports as easily accessible to you and your teams. So for 2022, we've launched a national schedule of tourism capability supports. So this pre-populated schedule will help you access supports that suited to your business at a time that actually suits you. 
it's going to be live and it'll be updated as we add new programs. Now currently it's, it's pre-populated through the end of June, but we'll always be working three to six months in advance. So you'll have this year round um, calendar of supports that are open to all tourism businesses. It's live now for registration and you can do that through the business hub or through the trade portal. Now then talking just about the trade portal, and I mean, we've all talked this morning about that digital presence and how important it is. And this was something that we put in place really, excuse me, at the, at the very beginning of COVID. And it's actually proven a really, really useful resource for a lot of businesses. Because what it does is it kind of gives that bite-sized help, like the self-help templates, videos, and even Niall had mentioned the various marketing toolkits that are up there that you can take a lot of that information and cut and paste it into your campaigns. So as I say, this was actually, it's, it's proven a really useful resource. We've had over 350,000 visitors. There's been over 100,000 downloads of documents, templates, video views, podcasts, etc. And just some of the comments here are really important for that kind of feedback to know that we're doing the right thing and it's on track. But what I'd say too is if there's additional information that you'd like to see up there, please let us know because we want to, we'll, we'll continually keep that refreshed and it'll very much complicate, or sorry, not complicate, complement the schedule of supports that's going to be in place as well. So look, at just, to, just to wrap up, I mean, really, you're at a very kind of critical inflection point in all of your businesses for 2022, as you really kind of move out of that, that pandemic era into recovery and growth. Our focus is very firmly around drive, helping you drive uh, business performance, as well as helping you position your business for that accelerated growth and the opportunities that are going to come up. And we'll do that through this, like kind of the, the very researched and targeted supports we have in place. This, the schedule of supports will make it really easy for you. And then that always on resource on the business support hub that you can get the more information there you need. So look, we look forward to working with yourselves and the Wild Atlantic Way team through 2022. And with that, I will hand back over to you, Maria. Thanks, Helen. Um, so now we're going to look at our new Wild Atlantic Way strategy 2022 to 26. Um, the Wild Atlantic Way is now eight years old, uh, believe it or not, and it has, I think we can agree, been a huge success for industry and communities all along the West Coast. Um, in 2019, one million more international visitors came to the Wild Atlantic Way than in 2014. And it's a household name in Ireland and, and, and a favorite for the whole market. So this strategy is really about building on that success and being ambitious for the brand. Um, eight years into it, we know an awful lot more about what we want from it, and we also know what we don't want from it. So I think there's been a realization by all of us that the Wild Atlantic Way has to work for the visitor, the industry, the community and the environment, and getting that balance right is absolutely vital. Um, we have an updated vision now for the Wild Atlantic Way. I'm going to go onto the page. It's, it looks very busy, but don't worry, I'm actually going to call it out to you. I, I hope I do it justice. It's 2032, and the Wild Atlantic Way is internationally renowned for its spectacular seascapes, raw beauty, and warm hospitality. It ranks as one of the top five touring routes in the world, with its rugged coastline, unique Irish culture, traditions, and friendly people at the heart of its offering. International and domestic visitors alike are enjoying all parts of the Wild Atlantic Way, and dispersal along the route and into towns and villages in the region has become more evenly spread. Visitors to the Wild Atlantic Way talk of being inspired and enriched by memorable engagement with these vibrant and creative communities whose lives and traditions have been shaped by the Atlantic. They talk of the wildness and beauty of the West Coast and the abundance of ways to enjoy the great outdoors both on land and by sea. They value the freedom and energy it gives them to feel fresh, salty air, explore sea cliffs and caves, walk and cycle wonderful coastal trails, uncover hidden beaches, sample the best of seafood, and immerse themselves in living culture. Now, this vision was shaped by feedback that we got from over 650 industry partners and stakeholders. And these on the screen here were the top three priorities that you've asked us to focus on. So the first is around um, providing better facilities and infrastructure so visitors can enjoy the West Coast more responsibly. Um, wildness and protecting the wildness was also really important to you, and of course it is to us as well. And it's important that everything we do 
always protects the landscape, never harms it, and that we pass it on intact to future generations. And then thirdly, there was wide agreement that dispersal along the route and into the region is very uneven and that this absolutely has to be addressed. So we've taken um, these to shape our strategic challenges for the next five years. And I'm going to take you through each one of them and how we're going to address them over the lifetime of the strategy. So the first is around growing the year-round appeal of the Wild Atlantic Way. We want more high-value visitors and we want them all year round. And for that to happen, we're going to become even more targeted um, in who we market to and when. We need better visibility online of all the amazing things to do on the Wild Atlantic Way so that visitors will know before they come and will get a longer stay as a result. The route itself needs investment. Um, and finally, we need much better linkages within the destination so visitors can get around without a car easily. So we need improved public transport. In the northern half of the Wild Atlantic Way, it still has a low profile in the international markets. We need iconic attractors that are going to motivate international visitors to come, stay longer and drive increased revenue. And we're also going to partner further with our colleagues in tourism Northern Ireland to make sure that we have mutually beneficial linkages with the Causeway Coast. In the southern half of the Wild Atlantic Way, Galway City to Kinsale, we need strong visitor management plans for those towns and attractions that are overheating in the summer. And we also need to be ambitious for the established destinations, keep refreshing the offering um, and make sure that they stay relevant and competitive. And finally, we need more all-weather attractions if we're going to extend the season well beyond the summer months. On the wildness, it's all about providing appropriate facilities, sustainable destination development, and that really is about value over volume, um, and taking communities into consideration um, with every decision that we make. All our plans are and will be environmentally assessed, um, and we have an environmental monitoring program in place in the Wild Atlantic Way since its inception, actually, which I'm not sure many people know. And again, that gives us all the information we need to make sure that we always protect um, the landscape at all costs. Helen has already spoken about our supports, which we continually adapt to make sure that we're always assisting and enabling your business to grow. And we're going to talk now about destination and experience development plans, or DDPs. And these are how we're going to deliver the strategy on the ground, agree the right interventions, and ensure every destination on the Wild Atlantic Way can reach its full tourism potential. So we have a number of DDPs launched um, already. They've been really, really well received, and we've built very strong tourism networks with industry communities um, and stakeholders. Um, and to bring these to life and to show you what they can achieve, we're going to take a closer look at two today. We're going to look at Clue Bay um, and Limerick in a bit more detail. And Margaret Jenkins, um, our team manager, is going to kick us off at Limerick. So over to you, Margaret. Thanks, Miriam. So Miriam has brought you through the strategic challenges for the Wild Atlantic Way South. And to that's to increase revenue and to encourage more visitors to lesser known areas. And while Limerick has the same challenges, it's in a slightly different way. See, Limerick performs extremely well in the corporate market, which means that it's actually busy midweek when the Wild Atlantic Way is quiet, and it's quieter at the weekends when the Wild Atlantic Way is busy. Limerick also has a very strong accommodation base. It has great places to eat, lots of things to see, see and do, and above all, it has really strong tourism providers. So it was clear to us when we came to Limerick that we just needed to reposition Limerick and to capture, it, capture the leisure market. So if we look then on the map here on uh, your right, where Limerick is located, it's right in the middle of two of the busiest leisure destinations. And it's also only 20 minutes from places like Shannon Airport. Um, it's an hour over, away from places like the Cliffs of Moher and the Burn. So Limerick had this uni unique opportunity to leverage the Wild Atlantic Way and all of the ingredients for, for a great leisure offering. So our job now was to work with the industry and to reposition Limerick as a great leisure destination. So we started with a deep dive into Limerick's tourism offering and we came up with a five-year strategy to do just that. Now the audit highlighted a number of key actions for Limerick and the first was to create a brand for Limerick that would align itself to the Wild Atlantic Way. So in putting this together, we had all of the key tourism industry from, from Limerick around the table. 
It was really important to us that we had their knowledge and of course we needed them to buy into the brand and to be able to sell it. So while Limerick was a part of the Wild Atlantic Way, it wasn't necessarily seen as that. So we had to come up with a brand that was both true to Limerick, but also position it within the Wild Atlantic Way family. So we did just that and we came up with this brand, the Wild Atlantic Way Gateway City. This brand was tested in the domestic and the international markets and the feedback was that people understood that it was a great place to explore the Wild Atlantic Way, but it wasn't necessarily on the coast. So the brand is still very new. We only launched it last year in June, but the feedback has already been fantastic. So the second short-term action within Limerick and within the plan was to look at feedback from visitors about, the navigate, uh, about navigating the city. So the visitors' feedback was said that it was difficult to find the tourism heart or the city centre, and yet the city is very compact. So we looked at areas within the city and broke it up into districts that were already actually naturally there. So you can see from the map here, you've got uh, the milk market, which is you know, one of the staples of Limerick. So we've the milk market quarter, the city centre, the riverfront, the Georgian quarter, and of course, where King John Castle lives in the medieval quarter. So this makes it easier um, for the visitor to understand, more digestible. So I'm glad to say that in partnership with Limerick County Council, um, and funded by our own destination town scheme, we have an orientation and wayfinding signage strategy underway that will transform the city. It's going to navigate the visitor through the city with engaging signage that reflects the edgy vibe of, of Limerick City. And we will have that complete by the end of this year. So Limerick is well on its way to repositioning itself as an attractive leisure tourism destination and fulfilling its full potential. The lack of a corporate business through, um, activity throughout COVID has accelerated the need for Limerick to focus on the leisure markets, which it did so very successfully. We now have our five-year strategy and the added incentive to achieve all of our objectives by 27, 20, sorry, 2027, when all eyes will be on Limerick as it hosts the Ryder Cup. But it's not just for the Ryder Cup, this plan is for the long term. So we have lots done and a lot to do, and I'd like to thank all of our industry partners, especially the industry stakeholders like Limerick County Council, for who have helped us along the way. So I'm now going to hand you over to Eva, who's going to bring you to Clue Bay. Thank you, Margaret. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and if you don't know me, my name is Eva Costello. So moving up the coast now from Limerick to Clue Bay in County Mayo, we're going to look at a DEDP that has different challenges than Limerick. Clue Bay is in the northern half of the Wild Atlantic Way, so therefore has a lot less of the international market. This area has a really strong domestic tourism base, which is great. However, there's that over-reliance on that domestic market means that the average room rate in this area is one of the lowest on the Wild Atlantic Way as well as the challenge of a weather-dependent short season. So this plan provides us with a unique opportunity to address these challenges with the ultimate ambition being to increase revenue and visitors, plus lengthen the season, all underpinned by a sustainable approach that protects the environment. So this plan was launched in November 2021 in Newport and Mayo. So we're going to look at a little bit the, the plan in a little bit more detail now. So Fault Ireland worked together with the communities and industry in the area to understand the challenges and how they could be addressed. So firstly, there's a lack of indoor attractions for the rainy day or for that family market. An investment in infrastructure is needed to make it a more year-round attraction and destination. Secondly, while Clue Bay is very well known nationally due to iconic attractions like Crow Patrick and Westport House, there's a lack of awareness by the international visitor on what the whole area has to offer. Currently, up to 80% of the visitors that visit Clue Bay are domestic. So there's a huge potential to grow this into international, uh, for international markets who obviously spend more and stay longer. And lastly, the tourism season in Clue Bay is very short, at times little more than six weeks. So it's very weather dependent as most of the product is outdoors for cycling and walking. So what will this plan deliver for Clue Bay? The key actions that are included in this five-year plan are investment in iconic all-year-round visitor attractions. For example, the current ongoing investment in Westport House and Westport Estate. The development of immersive and 
um, outdoor experiences with high quality supporting infrastructure, for example, the investment at Wildnafen National Park and the beach facilities at Kiel and Caramore. And to ensure Clue Bay has the best in class online shop window to make it easy for domestic and international visitors to look, book and review post visit. So I'm now going to uh, focus on some key transformational investments that are quite different that are included in this plan and that will address these challenges. So the first one we'll talk about is Westport Estate. I'm glad to see Biddy is here in the audience. <laughs> um, so last year, Fault Ireland announced the largest investment ever in a singular tourism product to assist with the development of Westport Estate as a national attraction of significance um, north of Galway. So under this DEDP, Westport Estate will be creating a very different and uniquely Irish rewilded landscape experience that will be called the Wild Realms, which connects the earth with Irish heritage. The restoration of Westport House and the reimagining of the 300-year history will be a strong feature in this. And in addition, there'll be a brand new indoor immersive visitor experience created that will tell the legendary story of Grace O'Malley, the Pirate Queen. Another of the transformative actions in, in future investments in new products at Wild Nathan National Park. This is one of the most unique wild landscapes on the Wild Atlantic Way and the park has huge potential to increase visitors both to the park itself and to the visitor centre at Ballycroy. The park is now a designated gold tier dark sky park. And this Clue Bay DEDP, in partnership with National Parks and Wildlife Services, are going to develop this park to be an outstanding attraction for Mayo and for the Wild Atlantic Way. The two key long-term plans that are in the DEDP are to develop the Western Way as a long-distance off-road walking and cycling um, path and trail actually through the park itself and also the development of a planetarium and observatory to capitalise on the rare dark sky accreditation. Another action from, Clue Bay, from the Clue Bay DEDP was to create a loop around the bay. So Mayo County Council and Fault Ireland, we worked together with the ferry operators on Clare Island to create this new and exciting product, which we launched at the beginning of summer last year. So the Clue Bay bike trail is a combined bike and ferry route looping Clue Bay, including both Clare Island and Ackle Island. It's a loop of 105 kilometres, and it's already helped position Clue Bay bike trail as the premier loop cycle experience of the Wild Atlantic Way. I hope you've already heard about it. So these investments in Mayo address the challenges already mentioned, and will be a game changer by attracting more international visitors north of Galway, staying two to three nights, open all year round and therefore lengthening that season. So now we've heard from two DEDPs uh, on the Wild Atlantic Way, one south in Limerick and one north in Clue Bay. And you've heard there's a different approach for each one because they have different challenges. There are more DEDPs in the, in the pipeline for this year and next year and you can see them listed there behind me. Um, so now, thank you very much and I'll hand you back to Miriam. Thanks, uh, Eva and Margaret. So now we're going to take a very quick look at product development on the Wild Atlantic Way, bearing in mind that Orla Carroll and her team are going to bring you through this in more detail virtually on Thursday. Um, well, you can see here behind me, there is huge investment um, in the Wild Atlantic Way that's going to be realised in the lifetime of this strategy. Um, and just to name a couple, Eva's already spoken about Westport House, but there's also Fort Dunree, and they're going to be two iconic attractors in the northern half of the Wild Atlantic Way. We also have lots of developments in Sligo with the Surf Centre, with the Cultural Plaza, Galway City, we're going to have a fabulous new immersive um, museum, which will give us a really badly needed um, family and, and rainy day um, attraction. Uh, we have our Burn Discovery Trail, which we've just launched. And again, that's about bringing people further into the burn to discover um, all it has to offer and to stay longer. We'll also have the Blasket Centre, which is going to open a new exhibition um, centre for the summer, and much, much more. And again, the, the, the amount of investment that this represents is 50 million euro, just on this page alone. And there will be much more investment to come according to the gaps identified by our regional tourism strategy and through our DDPs. In addition to this, we're going to have 
10 new shared facilities with showers, changing rooms, toilets, lockers at beaches all along the West Coast, all of them designed to the highest environmental standards in partnership with our local authorities. And these will go some way to enabling people to enjoy the outdoors more responsibly. We also have destination town projects in every county on the Wild Atlantic Way. We also have outdoor dining projects. And on the screen there, you've got Limerick, Dingle and Sligo, just as some examples. And these are all about embracing that trend for using the outdoors all year round and making our urban centres as, as enticing as we possibly can. And this is the footprint of, of that investment. It covers cities, town and villages um, all over the region and there will absolutely be more to come. You'll be glad to hear. So we're on the home stretch now, everybody. We're going to turn to marketing and promotion. Um, and we had a very far reaching campaign uh, last year. And this is a snapshot of that campaign. And 97% of all adults in Ireland saw that campaign at some stage last year. Uh, we had partnerships with TV, press, influencers like Ros Purcell. And we were delighted to partner with RTE um, for series two of No Place Like Home, which had prime uh, viewership on Sunday nights. So we're just going to take a little clip of Catherine on her travels and it really gave us amazing coverage for the West Coast. This part of Ireland is renowned for its food, its stunning beaches and its gorgeous little villages. And I read a quote the other day which I thought was fabulous. Travelling around West Cork is more of a journey of the mind. So digitally and socially, Wild Atlantic Way performs really, really well. Uh, we get over a million uh, website visits and we'll be increasing that uh, for 2022. And over 100,000 of those went directly to your websites. So please, please make sure that you are listed on discoverireland.ie. Um, on social media, we have 500,000 followers, so very, very strong on social media. Um, and Instagram actually is the strongest performer of all those platforms. And then in 2022, you've, you've heard already from Niall and Paul this morning, we're going to have an even bigger campaign. There is nowhere we won't be. And these are all the challenges that we're going to be on from TV, radio, press, influencers, you name it, we'll be there. You will not be able to miss this campaign. And you fed, pack, fed back to us through our, our networks and, and from conversations with you all um, that this year, it's the earlier, the better for this campaign. So as well as the weather sponsorship, we're going live this weekend coming with the Discover Ireland ad. Um, and Wild Atlantic Way brand and destinations feature really heavily um, in all those. And like last year, we'll adapt the campaign based on your feedback. So in 2021, um, we listened to all of you. If you told us you were busy, uh, we, we went lighter on the campaign. If you told us we were quiet, we upweighted it. And we will do exactly the same again this year. So we would profile destinations when you needed the most. So really important that we stay in really good contact together and we get that right. And I think we did get it right last year and it's more important than ever that we get it right this year. We'll also have a very strong sales campaign behind that. We'll be working with partners like TripAdvisor, Expedia, uh, Win Win to drive conversion. So as many bed nights as we possibly can. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the Wild Atlantic Way ad. So I think it's been a very long time since we've seen it. Um, so here you go. You might think you know the Wild Atlantic Way, but maybe it's time for a closer look to feel the rush of crashing waves and chance upon a love story steeped in time to take to the sea to see what lies beyond and beyond. <laughs> Keep discovering the wild Atlantic way. So you've probably heard me say this, but I'm going to tell you again anyway. Um, that ad tested better than any ad the um, agency had seen in years and years and years. It was off the charts with every consumer um, domestically. So look, you're going to see it on your screens um, very soon. Um, and obviously we'll be engaging with all our industry networks to make sure that you know when your destination is being profiled and how you can leverage it. We also have marketing toolkits that are available online that give you all the content you need. And we will be doing everything we can to drive visitors through your door um, this year and as soon as we can. So Sinead, uh, we've come an awful long way together. 
thank you very much to all of you for your willingness to work and partner with us. We are into a new chapter now, thankfully, and we have every opportunity to make the Wild Atlantic Way the best it can be. So, Gurmina Magi. <laughs>